All right, this is 1.2. We're going to be talking about algebraic expressions. The difference between an expression and an equation is just that an equation has an equal sign, an expression doesn't have an equal sign. So like an expression would be 3x, an equation would be 3x equals 9, All right? So the differences. Uh, so we're going to evaluate algebraic expressions. Basically, you're going to take something that is an English sentence and try to translate it into numbers and um, operations. Operations are generally just add, subtract, multiply, divide. You can also take uh, power or a root of a number. Those are... Um, Operations. Sorry, it's not even my phone. Okay, so we will identify and evaluate algebraic expressions, identify natural numbers, whole numbers, integers, rational numbers, and irrational real numbers, find the absolute value of a number, find the opposite of a number, and write phrases as algebraic expressions. That's a lot, but don't worry, we can do it. A variable, one second. Okay, sorry. A variable is a letter used to represent any number. We're in algebra, right? And so a variable is like X and we use X or a letter A, B, C to represent a number when we don't know what that number is, right? A constant is a fixed number or a letter that re represents a fixed number. In our class, it'll both mostly be a number that is the same. So when they, you hear constant, it just means a number, not a letter, right? It's always the same. It is constant. An algebraic expression is formed by numbers and variables connected by the operation, remember, operation of addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, raising the powers, or taking roots. So we would read this algebraic expression as 3x plus 5, or we took a number, multiplied it by 3, and added 5 right? Here we took a number, we squared it, we multiplied it by five. We took that number, we multiplied it by six. We subtracted the 5a squared. No, we subtracted the 6a from the 5a squared, and then we added 40. And then here, did you know a fraction bar is actually division? So we are taking y to the fourth minus y squared plus 15 and dividing it by 4y. To evaluate an algebraic expression, substitute the numerical value for each variable into the expression and simplify the result. So substitute the numerical value for each variable into the expression. If I have three X plus five, and I know that X is four, I'm gonna substitute that four in. The way I would do that, one second. The way I would do that is I would take that variable, the variable, sorry, is X, take that variable, put it into parentheses and then substitute out the X and substitute in the four. Three times four plus five, right? So that would be 17, I think. Whereas if you forget, I apologize, if you forget or you omit the parentheses, you might just write three times four plus five. And that looks like 34 plus five and that's not what we want, right? So that's why I always put parentheses around the variable before I substitute. For example one, they're asking us to find the area of a rectangle. So we have the length in meters, the width in meters, and our area will be in meters squared because we're asking how many square meters make up this rectangle. The area is the length times the width. I guess I should say area is length times width. We can also substitute that for A equals L times W, or like they do here, A is LW right next to each other. Two letters right next to each other imply multiplication. Okay. So L in this case is five and W is 3.2, so just like we did before, A equals L times W, A equals parentheses L times 
parentheses W, A equals five times 3.2. Five times 3.2 is 16. Sorry about my lighting. So the area is 16 meters squared. Good. Now it says evaluate. Evaluate just means solve, find the answer. Evaluate B minus 5A when A is 4 and B is 35. So we have B minus 5 times A when B is 35 minus 5 times 4. If we are following, I call it mm, grouping symbols, exponents, division, multiplication, addition, subtraction. So this is the order of operations. You might have also seen it as PEMDAS. What it means is grouping symbols or parentheses. So this one's grouping symbols first and then exponents and then division and multiplication and then addition and subtraction. So that is the order. The first thing you want to do is your grouping symbols. Also important to note that grouping symbols it could be parentheses, right? It could also be brackets. It can be a division bar. So anything above the division bar and below the division bar are a group. It can also be anything inside a radical or it can be, let's see. oh, anything inside of absolute value bars. So those are all different grouping symbols. So first evaluate whatever in, is in parentheses, then evaluate anything that's an exponent, which means it's been raised like that number or that meter square number. Exponents can be any number, not just two, but if there's a small number up above on the right-hand side. Division and multiplication from right to left and addition and subtraction from right to left. So as you can see, we need to multiply five times four before we subtract. So we have 35 minus five times four is 20, right? 35 minus 20 is 15. So my final answer is 15. Now we are talking about the number line. A number line is a line on which each point is associated with a number. The middle of the number line is zero and then every number to the right of zero is a positive number. So we're going higher or greater values to the right. Anything to the left of zero is a smaller, is a negative number or as you go further left, your numbers get smaller, okay? Negative four is smaller than negative three. One is smaller than two. Negative one is bigger than negative two. Five is bigger than one. The further this way you go, the bigger the number. The further this way you go, the smaller the number. Also, just to note, this is still a number line. And this is another number line. So when we start working on graphing on a coordinate plane like this, you can look at it as a number line going right to left and then a number line going up and down. It's just two number lines that cross each other at the origin or at zero, zero. Okay, so this is just um, pre-graphing. <laughs> now we are moving on to sets of numbers. These can be challenging, okay? We're gonna do sets of natural numbers, whole numbers, integers, and real numbers, rational numbers, and irrational numbers. So I'm just gonna, right now, do that. Let me pause. Okay, I wanted to, I needed to draw this. <laughs> so here are all real numbers. 
Real numbers are then separated into rational numbers and irrational numbers. Irrational numbers are numbers that cannot be written as a fraction. Or the decimal never ends and never repeats. So they're kind of, a lot of um, radicals are irrational numbers. The number pi is an irrational number. So when you look in your calculator at pi, it goes on until your calculator just stops. Um, it goes all the way to the ninth um, place value behind the decimal. So those are irrational numbers. Rational numbers, however, do have a decimal that ends. They can be negative and they can be represented as a fraction. So that's a rational number. Integers are within the group of rational numbers. So all numbers that can be represented as a fraction or as a decimal place that ends is a rational number. Within that group, there are integers, which are only well, only um, numbers without that can be represented as one number, not a fraction, not a decimal. So the square root of four is an integer because it's a perfect square of two. So the square root of four is the number two. Negative eight divided by two is just the number negative four. So it, you can write it as a fraction, but it, you can also write it as a number without decimals, okay? It can be a negative, it can be a zero, it can be a positive. Okay, those are integers. Within integers are whole numbers, which are integers that are not negative. So whole numbers mean there are no decimals, there are no fractions, and there are no negatives. So nine divided by three, that's actually just three, right? 12 divided by one is just 12. So it can be written as a number, whole number. Natural numbers are all of the whole numbers except zero. So whole numbers are only positive and zero. Natural numbers are only positive numbers. Good. So you could include like uh, 10 over five because that becomes two, right? 10 divided by five is two. But there's the breakdown of different types of numbers. Okay, before we go on. So natural numbers, they do not, does not include zero. Zero. Whole numbers does not include negative. Integers does not include fractions or decimals. So we would say integers does not include fractions or decimals. Whole numbers does not include negative. and does not include fractions or decimals, right? And then natural numbers does not include zero and does not include negative and does not include fractions or decimals. So that's why I put them inside. So no integer is gonna be an irrational number, right? The integers are only coming from rational numbers. All integers are rational numbers. All whole numbers are integers. All natural numbers are whole numbers, right? So if the integer includes any rational number that's not a decimal or a fraction, then whole numbers will not include decimals or fractions and natural numbers will not include decimals or fractions, right? So whatever this definition is, we're adding and no zero, right? Whatever rational number definition is, we're adding and not a decimal, good? All right, so now we're going to put numbers into sets. The objects of a set are called its members or elements. Probably more popular. Set just means a group of numbers. And then roster form just means you list every element in the set. Set builder notation means you describe the elements of the set. This little E is used to represent elements of a set. So when we look at this problem, example four, zero, this is saying is 
an element of the set that follows it. Nine is not an element of the set. Okay, so that's what that means. Moving on to example three, write each set in roster form. Roster form just means a list. So X is a whole number between one and eight. You're still gonna make this bracket. X is two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that's the end of my list. Good. X is a natural number greater than 100. So let's just look at a natural number real quick. Natural numbers cannot have zero and cannot have negative. So the natural number is greater than zero. I just need to make a list of all of them. Uh-oh, 101, 102, 103. You can now just say dot, dot, dot. Dot, dot, dot means continuing in this fashion forever, okay? Example four, determine whether this is true or false. Zero is an element of the set X. X is a natural number. Let's look again at natural numbers. Natural numbers are not including zero. Zero is for whole numbers, integers, or rational numbers, or real numbers. But natural numbers do not have zero. So zero is an element of the set X is a natural number. We would say this is false, right? Because natural numbers do not include zero. Nine is not an element of the set four, six, eight, and 10. So that is true. There is no nine in that set. Real numbers is all, so let's look at this. Real numbers is all rational and irrational numbers. Rational numbers, the set of all numbers that can be expressed as a quotient of integers. When, so a quotient of integers means a Fraction, because quotient means divide, fraction means divide. Integers means whole numbers, right? Well, not whole numbers, obviously, but integers means negative and positive numbers that don't have decimals or fractions. Uh, when written as a decimal, decimal will end or repeat. Irrational numbers are all numbers that cannot be expressed as division, sorry. So they cannot be expressed as a fraction or as division problem. When written in decimal form, the decimal will not end or repeat. That was a mistake, I apologize. So is this true or false? Zero is a real number. Real number is everything. So this is true. Every integer is a rational number. Every integer is a rational number. Right. The square root of three is a rational number. So irrational numbers cannot be represented, sorry, irrational numbers cannot be represented as fractions. So if I go to math fraction, there is no fraction. It just shows me the decimal again. And it doesn't look like there's any pattern with the decimal. At the very end, it's 0808. Um, but it doesn't end, right? So I'm going to say that the square root of three is an irrational number. So that would be false. Here is just absolute value. The absolute value of a number is the distance a number is from zero on the number line. The absolute values of seven and negative seven are both seven since both numbers have a distance of seven units from zero. So if you count from here, from negative seven, You are seven units away from zero. We went seven units that way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. To get to positive seven, we went that way, seven units. So absolute value is just asking you how far did you have to go from zero? Seven, good. So the absolute value of negative two is gonna be two. So this is how we write absolute value between the two absolute value bars. And that distance is two from zero. What about one? Negative eight. Negative eight is going to be 
eight places away from zero. Good, what about three? Three is gonna be three places away from zero. Good. Some people say absolute value just means turn it positive. There's nothing untrue about that. So you can remember it like that. I remember it as a distance. We're never gonna go a negative distance, right? So absolute value is just talking about the distance from zero. And distance will never be a negative number. So here we have it again, the absolute value of a real number demoted by absolute value bars around that number is the distance between that number and zero on the number line. So between negative four and zero, we have a distance of four. So the absolute value of negative four is four. Between zero and five, we have five units. So the absolute value of five is five. The absolute value here of seven is seven. The absolute value of negative six is six. The absolute value of negative four fifths is just four fifths of one unit away from zero. That's supposed to be an equal sign, not a negative. And then zero is zero units away from zero. It's not a trick question. Opposites or additive inverse. So those two things mean the same. They are two numbers that are the same distance from zero, but on opposite sides of zero, okay? So when we were looking at our number lines, here, negative seven and seven are opposites or additive inverses of each other, okay? Negative 10 is the opposite of 10. And you can say 10 is the opposite of negative 10. Uh, negative eight is the additive inverse of eight. Eight is the additive inverse of negative eight. Just that distance away from zero in the other direction. Good. The opposite of a number A is the number negative A. The opposite of a number negative A is the number A. For every real number A, taking away a negative of A equals A, right? Because two negatives make a positive. So what is the opposite of negative 35? It is positive 35. What is the opposite of 12 or the additive inverse of 12? It is negative 12. We'll, real quick note here, negative three over 11 is the same as negative three elevenths, which is the same as three negative elevenths, okay? The Additive inverse, I'll show you, it doesn't matter where you put your negative sign. You could say negative three elevenths. All right, so negative three elevenths will give you the same um, number as negative three divided by 11 or as three divided by negative 11. So if you're ever confused about where to put the minus sign, it does not matter. If there's one minus sign, it can go there, it can go there, or it can go there. If there are two minus signs, so negative three divided by negative 11, they cancel each other out because a negative divided by a negative is a positive. So if you have one, it can go anywhere. If you have two, they cancel each other out. 1.9, oh, sorry, we didn't talk about the opposite. The opposite is positive three over 11, right? And then 1.9 is negative 1.9 units away from zero, right? Now, Translating phrases, the most difficult part. Sum, so here's what um, can mean addition. Sum plus added to more than increased by and total are addition. Subtraction would be difference minus subtract less than decreased by and less. Multiplication would be product times multiply, multiplied by, of, and double or triple. Division would be quotient, divide, shared equally, among, divided by, and divided into. Okay, so now we're going to look at these words and try to um, write the symbol for those words. 
right as an algebraic expression, what x represents on the number. Hold on, I'm going to go, I'm going to do this, these two first. So I think these give good examples. Writing expressions, remember we talked at the very beginning and it's the difference between an expression and an equation. And an equation will have an equal sign, will include an equal sign, and expression will not include an equal sign. Expression, you're just expressing something. Equation, you're saying this equals this, right? 3x equals 12. This is just 3x because it's an expression. It can be as long as you want, but it has no equal sign. So when you are writing, when you're looking at the English word and writing the math term, there are some clues. Look for clue words. For the clue word, the product of, place the constant before the variable. Remember the constant is the number. The variable, is the letter. You do not need to use a sign when you're using product of because product of means multiply, okay? Place the constant before the variable, do not use a sign. So when you see the product of four and X, place the number before the letter and do not use a sign. That's what they recommend. It is okay if you want to use a sign, right? Four and X could be four times X, or it could be, if it was the product of Y and five, that could be Y times five, okay? This isn't wrong, but they do like to put the number in front of the letter and not use a symbol. Number two, for the clue words more than, for the clue, clue words more than and less than, we're going to invert the order. To invert means to switch or to flip, okay? So anytime you see more than or less than, you have to invert or switch the order of the two numbers or the two words before it. So X more than five, switch the five and the X. Number three says, if there are no clue words, write the expression in order. So in the order that the words appear, you write the expression. Okay, let's practice. The product of, we know means multiply, four and X. So I would write this as four and X. However, remember they said, put the constant before the variable and don't use the sign. So you can say four times X, or you can just say four X if you want the cleanest way to write it. The product of y and five, y times five, they decided it looks like five y, but this one's not wrong, right? We just see these more often. So it's like when you're learning a new phrase in English, the more you see it, the more you'll just copy it, right? <laughs> X more than three, but let's note that more than means invert. So I need to invert these two. I'm going to put the three over here and the X over here. More than means plus, right? Three plus X. That's what they got. Less than, it means invert the 13 and the Y. So we have Y minus 13 because we inverted them. The sum of... 10 and X. So remember, if there are no words like more than or less than, write the expression in the order that the word appears, in order. So 10 and X. The difference between, so difference between is gonna be subtract Y and four. I saw Y first, so Y goes in front. Y minus four, okay? There is one other one that inverts the order out of our examples. And it is the very last, or sorry, not the very last one, decreased by. No, sorry, it's not. It's an example 10. That doesn't seem subtracted from. Okay, more than, less than, or subtracted from. 
That also implies inverted order, okay? Equations, we have the same rules, more than, less than, or subtracted from indicate inverted. Good. More than, less than, subtracted from, we're going to invert them. Okay. An equal sign is used in place with the word is if there is an equal sign in what you're working on. Apologies. All right. So the product of four and x is 12. So we have four times x is 12. She also, they also wrote it as four x equals 12, right? Do not use a sign. The product of y and five is 10. So I can say y times five is 10, or I can say five times y is 10, or I can say five y equals 10. But that's the cleanest way to write it, good? More than means we need to invert. X more than three is 12. Thirteen less than Y is negative three. Good. The sum of 10 and X is 12. The difference between y and 4 is negative 2. So the difference between, they're not asking us to change the order. So we take y, subtract 4, and we get negative 2. So let's look at our last one, two, three, four, five, six examples. Write as an algebraic expression. If you have an unknown number, write it as x. So five decreased by a number. A number is gonna be our x. A number is our x, okay? Five decreased by a number. And it's just an expression, so we don't need an equal sign. The quotient of a number and 12. Remember, it's how the order in which you see it, a number, and 12, and the operation is quotient or divide, okay? Number nine, the sum of four and twice y. So sum we know is plus, and we're just looking in order, four and twice. Twice means two times, right? Two times y. So the sum of four and two y, or four and two times y, right? So that's the cleanest way to write. X less than, remember, less than gets inverted. X less than the product of Y and Z. So the product of Y and Z goes over here. X goes over here because we inverted them because of the less than. So the product of y and z goes here, the x goes here, and we subtract it. So y times z minus x. Three times the difference, so three times all of this, the difference of a number and 10. Three times x minus 10. Three times the difference of a number and 10. One fourth subtracted from three times a number. Three times a number, one fourth. Good. Okay. Email me if you have any questions about this first lecture. Thank you for watching.